Star Band is officially known as Across the Spider-Verse Starter Band, and it's the final cue in Across the Spider-Verse. But it's also a mirror of the very opening of the film. So we open with the beginnings of this cue. And we go through this crazy journey on the film, and at the end is where the whole cue and all the ideas, all the musical ideas in the film, all come together in this final moment of, of the movie. All the way through working on this movie, one of the things that's really important is how all the sounds, all the different worlds, all the different characters themes can all interact with each other. And it is one of the most complicated things with scoring this movie is giving everyone a theme, everyone a sonic identity, every world a sound identity, yet allowing all those worlds to fuse together when the moment is right. And this is the moment when everything comes together, to be honest, at the end of the film. And it's the culmination of like every idea in the film into one cue. The very first thing we hear is the Prowler sound, which was a very big part of the first film. I'm not. At this point, we've met this kind of Uncle Aaron from a different universe, Earth-42. Um, but this is the first time we really see he is the Prowler. We've hinted at it, but now we have, you know, the first big Prowler sound, which is this. And then under the Prowler sound, you know, there's, there's the Prowler sound, which I originally made in this, like, crazy synth jam with this guy called Brian Dugans, who's Acid House pioneer, just crazy noises, elephant noises, synths, all these things, and we kind of came up with that. But then... There's other things that people don't notice. So there's this sound, which is, let me see if I can get it up on here. This is me screaming. So that was recorded at Abbey Road. I was doing a project there and we were using these really insane old mixing desks, which were some of the stuff the Beatles stuff was done on. You know, you look at this mixing desk, there's a gazillion things there. But on this, they have like four channels and a few knobs, and they look like something that comes from, like, uh, the Cold War. Um, but they have the most, like, dastardly distortion on them that just is insane. We were trying to stuff out where we cranked the distortion to the highest level, and then I did some stuff, and we just recorded this scream. So this is just one scream. And so that's me screaming through this distortion. And then you can kind of put a filter on it and... That's one of the, like, the very subtle textures that's hiding behind the Prowler um, noise a lot in these scenes. And it's something that you don't really notice, but it creates a sense of unease, it creates a sense of tension, uh, and a sort of darkness that that character needs. So we did a string session with a bunch of strings, and these are the, the sort of chords that open up the film. And then one of the things we did with those strings was I was very keen for this not to sound like a conventional you know, Hollywood film. And that meant approaching every sound, every element of the film in a, in a way to make it feel new and exciting. And so, you know, we'd record a big orchestra and then we'd stick them through guitar pedals or crazy effects boxes. After that, we start to have, alongside the strings, we have this kind of very dark, visceral bass sound. A lot of the sounds in this movie created through lots of what I call research and development, where we made loads of sounds. I have a great assistant called Alex, um, who together we just spent ages going through noises, experimenting, and then trying to find the right kind of textures and noises, really, that will work in this in environment. And this was one I became a big part of trying to capture the sort of darker underbelly of the movie. I always loved this sound. So, and you hear that sound hinted at the very beginning of the film, but really it comes to its sort of life here. And I, I feel it kind of reflects this new prowl as kind of the lights, the technology. It's got a color to it that I think really represents that moment in the scene. So we then get this bass drum kick, kick in. See if I can find that. So for me, like with this movie, 
it's so important to be able to take this hybrid approach of electronic elements, hip hop elements, orchestral elements, rock elements, sound design. And this bass line for me is a very inspired by a lot of modern hip hop production, sort of 808 subby low end. I was trying to use that to take the place of the low end of the orchestra. So the, the bottom of the, the track would be driven by this beat. But what's also really important in this scene is it sets this beat up, but we then pull it away. So we then have this noise, uh, which for some reason we called Argentina dots. When you create noises, you give them all these stupid names because it's very hard to describe what a sound is, but this was a great sound. And what I love about this moment is you've got Miles on one side and you've got this other version of Miles. And we've had the break and then I wanted a question. Like this sound for me is like, what the hell's going on here? And then pretty quickly you come out of that question into like, I love this string line. So you're keeping this questioning going. And when he says, they call me the Prowler, we bring in the Prowler sounds. I mean, it's not rocket science. But the thing is, when you've, when you've created all these noises that are like hopefully recognizable within a second or so, you can then use them to create a much bigger palette and a much bigger thing of storytelling. We've got the strings coming in. So strings sound like this. Let's back that on some electronics. So we have electronics doubling the same line. We've got the questioning Argentina dots, but we've got the white noise coming in underneath it. So if we go at, start adding everything else in. Now we'll add in the Prowler sounds. So this continues. So during their, this moment, they're both kind of head to head. We keep this going. Nothing's happened in the scene yet. And for me, it's important to see where the storytelling moves. There we have this really big time-stretched version of the Prowler sound, which again just feels really visceral, really uncomfortable. It's a new twisted version of the Prowler theme we've heard from the first film because this character is a new twisted version of the Prowler. And we're now going from Miles meeting Miles into the bigger story. So I wanna I wanna make the score start to build and take us on a like a wider landscape, a wider journey. So we start bringing in the chords in the beginning. So here we start to see spot. And I wanted to bring back what I call like Miles's destiny theme, because for me, it's kind of one of the cause of these stories. There's, there's two themes in this. There's the Spider-Man, and this is kind of Miles. Bah, bah, bah. And that doesn't just relate to Miles. It's kind of about whenever there's an important destiny fate moment for Miles or all the characters. At its core, it's Miles, but it, it can relate to bigger story beats. So you can hear that in here. Let's have a listen. we have on top of that the other chords there's a lot going on in this track and it's like there's a lot going on in this track so, I'm, so we've got that's just the strings and i think we also have maybe bass so that's just the bass but then we also have things on top of that like this is the first introduction of This is some record scratching by Blakey. So this is pushing us towards this final moment. So we have that underneath, which is, is, is a device, sometimes for miles, but sometimes it's a device just to push the momentum and the, and the, the sort of stakes. This is when we see spot. There's also 
a hint back to like the spot theme when we first see spot underneath all this. Because the film opens with the drumming and for me, the drumming is both Gwen and punk. This is the first time we start to move from the electronic drums towards the real drums because we're about to meet Gwen. It's taking it, this, this track from a different world. We started off head to head, electronic, dark. And now I wanted to bring the band elements in. So this is the first bit where we start hearing. We spent so long on this cue. It is such a delicate piece of music to go from this like electronic drum break into a live drums, all these different elements and trying to pull them together into like a coherent piece. So we've got the drum machine coming in like with the white noise and then it's doing the same beat. So they're both doing the same beat and eventually we're gonna move towards Gwen, her band, world and move away from the electronic electronic world. Let's put the symbols on it. Let's put the hot rods in. So they're doubling the hi-hats in the beat, so we'll put the beat in. Let's put the real drums in. And just this rhythm section is like days and days and days of work just to get those eight bars. Tons of different locations, different rooms, different musicians. Another, another of the crazy electronic experiments there. Again, this is all big research and development phase. And now let's put the, uh, all the different layers of percussion in. Let's put a bit more synth in, let's put the bass in. Bye bye to the hip hop drum. Okay, and now let's put the electric, the real bass. Now let's put the electronic drums in. And now let's put the live drums in. So we've got this, and then, we are seeing Gwen for the first time. Gwen, you know, it's like, here comes the cavalry. And I wanted to hold off, because I would have really wanted to put in this noise. So this sound here. is kind of me cheating, because it's really where I want to put the Spider-Man riff, but the picture doesn't, it's not ready for the picture here. It's holding off key moments of music until the storytelling is there as well. And that's one of the hardest things with creating a scene like this is trying to make the whole thing feel simple and feel like a piece of music that you're not hitting every, you know, thing like this. It just wants to feel sort of cool and elegant, even though it's not necessarily an elegant piece, it's quite a rough piece, but it wants to feel natural. This is the bit when we first see Gwen, so I'm like, this is the moment where I want to hear the riff, the guitar riff and the, 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 the sense of, okay, Stuff's now starting to change. Let's just hear that. So there's like kind of like band line up. We've got three different guitars on this. So here's just one guitar. That's a low like guitar that's going through a really gnarly fuzz pedal. A big fan of, but doesn't cut through a lot. So let's go for another guitar. We've got this guitar. Quite high up. Again, it's a different frequency range. And let's try this one. That's your really big rock one. But you put them all together and you get a stacked sound. And it's a bit like looking at an orchestra. Like with an orchestra, you have the cellos and basses down here, violas here, violins up here. If you want to make something really big, boom, boom, boom. Put it on like three different octaves, four octaves, five octaves, whatever, and play the same thing. You get a huge sound. So it's like trying to take those kind of approaches into instruments like guitars, anything else. So let's, we have these guitars. But now we've also moved to 
the bass heard at the beginning of the film. Beginning of the film, you hear drums, you hear this riff, and you hear this bass line. Again, Gwen's world, we see the beginning is a sort of, you know, she's in a band. Um, I want to get that sort of late 90s aesthetic and then also have an echo of like punk's aesthetic. So we've got, so we've got the guitars, the bass, some electronics and a bunch of percussion. Now we're bringing the chords in again. You heard from early on, the string chords. These are going to build again. The chords you heard at the very beginning of the film. This is the end of the film. This is like, okay, we're now bringing everything into this final piece, this final push. If you remember the film, you remember this beginning. And you can hear how these strings are treated in a way that feels sort of more unusual. So that's Sam being very clever. Okay. And the other thing with these strings is they're moving up. They're moving up and up and up, which is pushing you towards this ending of, of, of a big moment. And that's a, a, a thing I love doing in music is pushing people towards a point where there's a payoff. For me, it's like having a point, a change, and then moving to, if you can get to a moment where everything comes together and you're like waiting for that moment and then it lands, which is kind of the very last bit in the film. Again, unresolved, but Miles' theme coming in. But listen to the bass. The bass is still moving until we get to the final bit and then everyone's just playing. And then a big trip flip. The thing that for me that's most exciting about this scene is the last, I don't know, 20 seconds of this film is literally just score. You know, everything is being told through no other medium except music. And the excitement that I hope people have for the next chapter of this story the kind of anticipation they have for, the, for those characters' journey, hopefully is all encapsulated in this one piece of music. And you've gone from something in the beginning that's very dark and mysterious into a question, into threat, and then into this kind of moment of release, and then this moment of like, okay, let's do this. I'm not.
never found the right band to join. So I started my own. With a few old friends. 